I would like you, if you would, to tell us to the degree that you can what you were typically dealing with when you started the, when you started working for the child sex crimes unit. Let us know what you saw. Let us know what you what that did to you. Because that sort of thing, that changes people's conceptions of humanity per se. Let's say the nature of the cosmos and, and what it means to be human, right? I mean, when you're when you're in contact with people who are capable of that level of darkness, you start to understand something about the nature of the human soul that you can't understand any other way. And that can be a I mean, that's the sort of thing that gives people post-traumatic stress disorder when they're soldiers. So and and now you said also your supervisor had an inkling that you might be protected against that, at least to some degree, because of your faith. So let's walk through what you learned and encountered first. What what did you see when you were working as part of this child sex crimes unit? What I saw was so shocking, Jordan. Uh, I thought child sex crimes would be 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Uh, my brain couldn't comprehend something more evil than abusing that age. The very first case I worked in 2002, I believe, I was given a, a bunch of VHS videos, some hard drives to look at that, that had been seized and had a warrant. The very first um, image I saw um, were... Um, there were three, uh, three little boys uh, <clears throat> that were probably seven, five, and three. And they looked uh, like they looked like my children. They had, you know, they had blonde, blonde eye, blonde hair, blue eyes, and they were being just raped, raped. These three little boys by this pedophile, and I was so shocked. I fell to my knees. I dry heaved, thinking I was going to throw up uh, into the wastebasket. I jumped into my car. I drove to my children's school. My three oldest kids. I checked them out. I still remember in my mind, I can still see dentist, dentist, dentist appointment I wrote. And I grabbed them. I took them home and just sobbed on the floor. My wife came in and I just, I wouldn't let the kids go. I was just holding them and shaking. Um, that was my very first experience. Uh, you talk about PTSD. I absolutely deal with PTSD to this day. Um, I, I took too long to actually deal with it. Uh, that's another story. Um, and I thought, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, I started getting help immediately uh, because I didn't want to quit. Uh, and uh, that, that's, that's what this is. That's what this is. And um, those kind of videos have increased over the last couple of years by 5,000%. Yeah, well, in, in, in Canada, um, we just had a report from an organization called the Western Standard that one million child sexual exploitation photos and videos have been identified in an Alberta child porn investigation. One million photos, eight arrests made. Okay, so that's some indication of the widespread nature of the problem. Now, you said that when you first encountered this material, it made you physically ill and also terrified for the safety of your children, but then also it necessitated you seeking um, help, I suppose, or aid. I mean, I've worked with people who've had post-traumatic stress disorder. Generally, what happens is that tragedy is not enough to give someone post-traumatic stress disorder, even if it's rather severe. It has to be a combination of tragedy and malevolence. And the real trauma comes as a consequence of contact with evil, with malevolence. And what people generally have to do in order to recover from that is to develop a rather profound philosophy of evil. And, you know, a religious faith in, in its most fundamental essence is a philosophy of good and evil. It, it does detail out the heart of darkness among human beings, point out to people, and this is particularly, although you're not, not uniquely true of the Christian tradition, but particularly true that that capacity for evil lurks in the heart of everyone and that our fundamental moral obligation as we sojourn here on earth is to overcome that proclivity within and also to stand up against it in the external world. And so you said you received some aid after you had been exposed to this first set of videos. Um, what, what is it about the way you looked at the world that had to change in order for you to adapt to what you were encountering? Well, I had to come to grips with the, the, an idea that I had never been confronted with before. 
that there are people and not a few, but millions of people, only millions of, of pedophiles could justify a demand of millions of child exploitation uh, material, videos and so forth. Uh, the first person you see arrested in the movie is a real person named Ernst Luposchensky in Sound of Freedom. He had over 2 million pieces of child rape material in his house. So um, to, to, to be confronted with the reality that there are people on this planet, and like, like I said, not a few, but, but millions, who want to indulge in watching five-year-old children be raped and sexually assaulted in ways that, and, and I'm sorry to be so raw, but I feel comfortable with you, Dr. Peterson, but uh, to, 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 to watch children's bodies actually break in the act of sexual assault, acts that your mind couldn't conjure up if you tried to conjure it up and that it's real, that is so shocking to the system. Um, it changes your life forever. I, I tell people, if I feel like I've had um, a, a million holes burned into my brain because I've watched thousands of hours of that kind of material. Not only not only watch it, and I love the scene that Jim depicts where he's, it's that's very real. I, I break, I can't watch, I can't watch the movie. But the movie's very good. The movie doesn't show any of this, by the way. It doesn't show anything like this. I don't want people to run away and be scared. But you see the scene where the, the camera flashes um, a close up into Jim's eyes. And that's that was me for, for 10 years, not only watching, but writing, writing it in details for the court to see, for the prosecutors to see, and, and, ha and raising children at the same time that are the very same age. And fortunately or unfortunately for me, I have now I have nine children. At the time I, I left the government at six. And so I can always identify the age of a child with one of my own children. And what my mind was at, almost automatically doing is I would superimpose my own children's faces and persons onto these children. And that's, that led to, um, that led to the PTSD, I'll be honest. Um, and almost a paranoia about what would happen to my children and watching my children. And I've, I've come a long ways and, and I'm, I'm, I'm able to deal with it, but I, 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 I was determined never to quit. And so I, I just sought more help and I, and I, I won't quit. So